Hello everybody, did you just pick up a brand new VPN but don't quite know what all the settings do or what they're for? Well today, let's go ahead and push out of our boundaries a little bit, dip our feet into some water, and take a tinkle in the realm of advanced VPN security and customization. Keep in mind, I do keep some of the things very simple in this video to make it easier to understand for beginners. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make this video. There are hundreds of VPNs with hundreds of settings and some settings have multiple names for the same damn setting. I'm gonna go over all the settings and what they do in Air VPN, and then show some other ways these settings might show up in other VPN services like NordVPN. So most VPNs will offer a recommended server type of setting, also known as an automatic server selection. This is gonna have your VPN provider pick a server with the best download, upload, and ping, and have you connect to that for the best experience. Keep in mind, it's not a perfect feature, and a lot of times it doesn't actually select the best server for you. Here on AirVPN, there is this setting called a network lock. This is a name specifically for AirVPN, and the actual setting in most VPN providers will be called the kill switch. So if your VPN connection drops for whatever reason, the kill switch will stop all internet traffic from going through, which otherwise would expose your IP address and internet identity. No bueno. Now, most VPN companies out there have an automatic kill switch like AirVPN's network lock, which blocks all internet traffic system-wide from going through. There are some VPNs, however, which have a manual kind of kill switch, which only kills pre-configured programs specified by the user like NordVPN. So Nord is going to have you select programs to quit if the connection drops, which isn't as safe as a full system kill switch. Next, selecting servers. Lots of VPNs will give you a nice big list or map of servers with all of these crazy numbers. Now, no need to get angry. This isn't your college calculus course. Let's slowly break this down. It's not as bad as it looks. So here you're going to have a country and location. Yay! Some VPNs will give you a score. I tend not to look at them. It's point if you understand the numbers. So latency typically referred to as ping is measured in milliseconds and it's simply the delay between your computer and the server you're trying to connect to. The smaller the delay the faster the response so naturally you're gonna want to make sure that your ping is low. Definitely make sure you're under 100 milliseconds. The load of a server often expressed by a percentage is just the amount of people using it. In most cases a nearly full server is gonna be slower than a not so full server so make sure your load isn't too high. If your VPN shows download and upload speeds for a server, the higher the better is the general rule of thumb. An overall server's speed is primarily dependent on its ping and load in combination with the server's download and upload speeds. There are some exceptions like when a server is optimized for a specific task, but this is the general way to go about it. Whew, we haven't even opened the settings panel, so let's go ahead and open settings for AirVPN. Nearly every VPN provider will offer some kind of setting to open and connect your computer to a VPN server when Windows boots up without you having to open the program yourself. Typically, you want to select Start with Windows for the program itself in addition to connect at startup to connect to a server when the program starts up. This is a pretty universal feature for most VPNs out there. Minimizing to the system tray is simply hiding the program from the normal area for programs to stay and only keeping it in your notification area. Next up is VPN protocols. For the most part, you always wanna stick with UDP protocols. UDP is more efficient and faster once a connection is established. The only times you're gonna to wanna to use TCP protocol is if your ISP is blocking your VPN, then typically resorting to TCP will bypass this, or if you're using a VPN connection over Tor or a proxy, then you're gonna to wanna to use TCP rather than UDP. If one TCP port is blocked by your ISP, try other TCP protocols and see if there's one that isn't blocked. The next settings panel is the proxy and Tor configuration section. If you wanna use Tor over VPN offering two layers of protection, then this is where you would do it. Not many VPNs offer this functionality, but some will. The other section is to use a proxy in addition to an Air VPN connection, most VPN services will offer a proxy section to use a proxy in addition to a VPN. The next setting is network routing, more commonly known by other VPN services as program exclusions. So if there's a program you don't want to go through the VPN tunnel, you can add it to the list to be excluded. This will be left out with a kill switch as well, so keep that in mind. This is actually a pretty useful feature if you want to keep your IP address and information in one program, such as a game, to be your normal IP address because sometimes in a game you don't want 
the normal slowdowns that come along with using a VPN. Next up is DNS settings. A domain name server, aka DNS, is like a phone book for the internet. It maintains a directory of where websites are located. You can use your own custom DNS in this section and most VPN services will allow you to use a custom DNS. Typically, the automatic DNS chosen by a VPN will be A-OK, -okay, so you don't have to worry about this. Those are gonna be all the main settings you're probably gonna wanna deal with in Air VPN. You will almost never have to go into the advanced section, and if you do, you probably know what you're doing. For a second source of settings, let's go over to NordVPN really quickly. Some other little things are automatic updates, which you're going to want to leave enabled. You wanna make sure your VPN is always kept up to date. Some VPNs offer an ad and malware blocker built directly into the service, like NordVPN's CyberSec technology. This is typically just a turn on feature with not much customization. And finally, this last little setting here probably easily has over a hundred different names across different services. Obfuscated servers is pretty much a way for Nord to bypass certain regional restrictions. Lots of VPNs have their own version of this feature, so keep an eye out for it if you do see it. If you're watching YouTube right now without a VPN, you will most likely never touch this setting. Now that's going to wrap up this video guys. I hope it helped you understand the settings and customization of VPNs a little bit better, hopefully a lot better, and you do feel more comfortable swimming in the deep end like Jamie Lannister. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Don't forget to follow me on these awful social media platforms and on Twitter. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I will gladly answer them down there. Have a fantastic day everyone. Techlore is out.